Yeah, so I definitely see that. But uh, before I move on to that, uh, I must take a minute and at least compliment uh, Honorable Minister on the Ambassadors of Hope initiative. You know, what I most mm -hmm. like about that initiative, uh, sir, is that uh, one, you know, when the COVID struck us, everybody was getting, you know, they were all discussing and everybody was all worried about how the adults will go through this COVID period. And somewhere the kids and the children were restricted to pure and the only topic was online learning. And like the Honorable Minister said, some games, Ludo, etc. But nobody really bothered about their mental status and how they will be able to cope up sitting in four walls of a house and seeing their parents constantly watch TV and seeing the news of COVID. And that would have had a strain on them. So the initiative to suddenly make them start thinking creatively and say, Ki mujhe kuch karna hai to show hope, I think was a brilliant initiative. And almost 30 to 35 to 40 days, entire Punjab and the children of Punjab were only thinking Ki kya karu to make it, uh, you know, to make myself uh, feel heard. And I think that took away 35, 40 days of COVID period just like that. And I think that was one fantastic outcome that happened. And the second, I, can, I mean, the comments and questions are not even what he's saying. We're getting comments on that. This is unprecedented. So that shows yes, the enthusiasm. Is. Possibly this can be a case study for other states, maybe for the central government. And how I, I, I certainly not think so. Enthused, engage in something that will have an impact beyond COVID. So I think no, I, 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 I certainly funny. think so, Dr. Batra. And the second point, what I genuinely enjoyed is the parity that he brought between government and private schools. You see, people typically don't. Look at this. Uh, a government, we've noticed mostly that government schools go in their own silos, private schools go in their own silos. Yape, both of them were brought onto a common platform. And, uh, you know, Singlaji, I think this is a very good initiative. And it, it's, it's but natural that we got such an unprecedented uh, response. What are the possibilities you see for in the skilling domain? So I was coming this, to that. For example, give us one insight, and then I'd possibly get the minister uh, input on that. Okay. So, Look, first of all, when I talk about collaboration with the government, let me not just restrict it to skilling. I would want to go the entire mile. You see, we have been already working with quite a few state governments. And our our process or our thought process is very simple. 85% of the schools today in the country belong to the government. And in a way, I think the number of children in this, in this country that are studying government schools are far, far greater in terms of pure volumes. Uh, somewhere, the three things that keep getting missing with government schools, which I believe, despite all the efforts, one, the enrollments, there seems to be a little bit of a stress in that. Number two, the learning outcomes. And number three, I think there has to be a very proper line of chain of link between pre primary students or the early years, right up to employment. And that is the chain that we'd like to enter and collaborate with the governments. Because what the government has got is infrastructure. What the government has got is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they got the budgets. What government has got is uh, a, a clear mandate that we need to do something for the for the children and the citizens of this country. What we can bring in as a private player is execution prowess. We can bring in you know dashboards and the right kind of tracking methodologies. For example, imagine Singla Sahib sitting and actually being able to have a complete look at what's happening in his entire ecosystem uh, purely through a touch of a button to understand whether because it's a, it's a 22 districts and a lot of districts in Punjab. So that is what we would bring to the table. In a way, what we are attempting to simply do is right from the early years where the child's brain gets developed, you know, 85% gets developed before six years. A lot of focus has to go into, into that area. And then there's called the preparatory in the high school where pedagogical, uh, in, in, in the, the entire influence of pedagogy has to be of a very different level. And finally, like you mentioned, Dr. Batra, on the skilling side, as they come out, they, it's, it's very important that somewhere around the ninth or 10th standard, we have in those aptitude tests brought in to understand which way each child is likely to get, uh, you know, what is the direction that each child has to go to. So there could be some children who are perfectly built into be going to IITs and IIMs. There are some children who are very, very good in, let's say, going into a, into a direction that can give them a, a, a very different kind of a skill set. Now, we would like to help the governments to understand that through artificial intelligence and other technological interventions, and then have the children come out so that when they enter into the, into the, into the world, they'll be able to choose what they want to do or the life path, as we call it. Uh, through interventions from uh, from our side, so I think there is a lot of uh, uh, hope that we can. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration we can do there. You also mentioned about post-COVID. I want to mention something here. Pre-COVID, I remember mostly the whole ethos of education was around brick and mortar schools, and technology would be a enabler out there. But I certainly believe, and Singlaji, do correct me if I'm wrong. Post-COVID. The e-platform would be the real mechanism of learning 
and the brick and mortar schools will become or the brick and mortar institutions will become the enablers to kya hoga ki especially as the children grow bigger unke paas devices honge unke paas content honge wo they will start learning on their own and they will use the brick and mortar and teachers to start getting some inputs as to how to navigate their uh, entire learning process however the early years probably we'll start having smaller preschools neighborhood schools near the near the houses so that the initial socio economic or sorry the socio emotional learning can be brought in sure. and then that can uh, that this is this is a kind of a kind of a reimagination that i am seeing post covid singla ji of course you would have much more insights into this but this yeah. i think to a large extent uh, they should just follow whatever honorable minister had just mentioned in fact i i very much enjoyed what he mentioned about the fact that when a student reaches 8th and 9th he should undergo an aptitude test to see which way his uh, you know his interest levels lie so so like i said i think it's a very simple mechanism of breaking it up into three parts first of all when the child is in his initial 3 to 5 to 6 years i think the focus should really be to get the fundamentals in place and you know that's when the whole like like we mentioned the whole you know the whole learning uh, the the initial learning the emotional skills the cognitive skills these are the most important areas and one should not miss that which is why even in government schools especially the banwadis and anganwadis i think a lot of focus should be given to that area and and we should really start getting the children to move to that space to start with as the child goes through the learning process as as uh, you know singla ji singla ji just mentioned you know the child has to start getting prepared for what's coming down 10 to 15 or 20 years which even we don't know and and that is where you know some of these initiatives of trying to do an aptitude test seeing which way the child is going to go it needs to be very very uh, uh, imbibed into into the education system and parents i think should not really get concerned about whether the child is to become a doctor or an engineer the, you know the, those are all traditional old methods that should be kept on the side now i think today especially in today's world and the world ahead information is not going to be a problem you know it is not required to absorb learn and memorize things because they are available everywhere around you what is important is how they use that to use their information how do they articulate that how are they able to convince people how you know how the listening skills have to go up the speaking skills have to go up the negotiating skills have to go up these are the areas that need to be uh, probably uh, you know emphasized upon how to get a child not to have a stage fright when when he he or she sits in front of 20 people these are the areas that probably need to be worked on and i think that is what uh, the, the new education system is going to be really focusing on in fact the new education policy which is going to come up for 30 years a lot of the chapters inside that is really touching upon some of these areas and a lot of emphasis out there is going to be on the two t's which is teacher and technology to get this uh, done of course singla ji this is just my thought you could you could definitely had add more or if you have any other points to make on this yeah. i think that you know there is no doubt that we need to do much more in that area in fact uh, one of the points uh, which i would like to talk from from punjab's uh, point of view even if you look at the recent migration uh, of of uh, the 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 you know the migrants who are moving up and down i think a lot of people have left punjab uh, and more than more than the ones who are coming into punjab so i think the real test is to try and see how to take care of the local state people and to prevent them from going away from the state and to try and see what they can do in that state and that is where i keep emphasizing apart from what singla ji just mentioned i want to emphasize on the whole concept of skilling inside schools and that is what has started to happen now the the you know the the current curriculum inside schools has has provisions for skilling also right from 6th standard it is earlier 9th standard has now come down to 6th standard and and in that the skilling is across mind uh, related skilling programs it's across hand related skilling programs and i think uh, we should be uh, you know correcting these areas as we as we go forward Uh, and 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 finally i don't think it's important or it's not required to only have itis or physical infrastructures like uh, uh, you know uh, like it is mentioned some time back i think we're slowly moving to an area or an era where even the digital platforms are going to get far more enhanced to try and bring these uh, uh, you know skilling learning to the uh, to the youth and to the children uh, it is very encouraging to even hear honorable minister talk about uh, you know the, the the direction in which public private partnerships are going to be set and and uh, uh, like like we all discussed some time back the new policy that's going to come out is really going to be a combination of technology uh, being integrated into uh, into pedagogy and uh, how uh, learning based outcomes is going to be more focused uh, in in schools and in other educational institutions and because of the sheer size of this country and we're talking about 1.5 million schools we're talking about more than 300 million students i think it is absolutely imperative that in order to really go down to every cluster the last mile village and to provide education and skilling 
I think a, a, a partnership between the government and a private player would be very, very critical. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the government has got all the wherewithal, the infrastructure and the required needs to, to, to have it brought into the system. The private player would simply bring in the execution prowess and would also track what needs to be done so that eventually the end objective that has been set by the uh, by the government at the at the levels of uh, the chief minister's office would eventually need to get uh, uh, you know imbibed into the into the into the ground so that is the simple formula eventually i would like to see uh, uh, an education minister like singlaji sitting and realizing that in his 20th district in this particular taluka in this village this child has not got the required learning versus this child has got the required learning how can you sit in an office and do that i think a private player will be able to uh, you know empower him with that uh, platform